Hi guys, in this video we will talk about scalar decomposition. My main goal behind this video is that make this topic as simple as possible and sort of like make you understand like or like generate like some intuition in your mind for this particular topic so that it doesn't seem scary which I feel it, it does seem scary to a lot of folks. And yeah, I hope after watching and understanding this video, like your probability of applying this technique in a new problem should increase. Yeah, let's get started. And uh, my advice would be to like try to understand all the parts clearly because whatever we explain in the beginning would most likely be used in the later parts. Okay, let's get started. So basically we have a question. We have one array and elements are named as A1, A2 till AN. And we will be given a list of queries. There will be like two type of queries. Query one will be, we are asked, what is the sum of elements from L to R, which is like sub array L to R. And the second query would be we want to change the element ax basically we want to change the value of the xth element in the array to y we want to support these two queries okay so let's try to think i mean if you want to think yourself you can pause the video here and then think actually i would sort of recommend you try thinking like whenever we say something and we are like okay what can be done it's always useful to try to think because i mean most of your improvement will happen in those moments when you are trying to think something yourself and then yeah that is the main moment when your under understanding sort of like expands okay let's go ahead yes so there is one simple thing right which comes to our mind okay in the first query let's say we have an array so whenever we are asked first query what we do is we iterate in the array from l to r and we keep calculating the sum of elements all right this is simple we are just iterating array from l to r and calculating the sum so in the worst case this will take we need to iterate the whole array so complexity of this will be o big o of n in the second one we are asked to change ax cool we have we, like we are just storing the array so we just change its value so this would be constant time right because we are just changing one element of the array so this would be constant time okay this is fine this is a simple technique we are use but yeah i mean this first operation seems to be taking a lot of time so let's try to think something else and try to reduce the time for the first operation again if you want to think yourself you can pause the video here and try for like five minutes try to think basically our goal is that we want to decrease it this time because on is too long right so if this query comes all the time then our complexity will be o of q of n if q is the number of queries all right let's try something different so now we are trying a different technique we are what we are doing is that we are doing some pre-processing and we are storing this prefix sum array basically prefix i will store some of elements from i to ith okay now the first query is sum of elements from l to r what we can do is prefix r have the element sum from 1 to r so we just want to subtract sum from 1 to l minus 1 so what we do is prefix r and we subtract prefix l minus 1 we are storing the prefix sum so this is just constant time because we just accessing two memories and then we are doing a simple operation all right in the second one 
we want to update an element basically we want to set ax is equals to y right so x will come in prefix sum of x prefix sum till x plus 1 till x plus 2 so in all the prefix sum values from x to n value of ax will create an impact so we will need to update all those values from prefix sum from x to n so this would be of o n complexity okay so like in the first operation we have done better we have gone from o n to o one but i mean in the second operation we are worse now we have gone from o one to o n this is i mean we are doing better in one operation but the trade-off is kind of similar i mean still this query can come almost all the time and it will be like o of q n again okay i mean we can we try to do like some sort of trade-off where we can sort of find a balance for both of these query types somewhere in between these two techniques okay so it turns out that the balance we find actually would be like a clever trick and sort of combination of both of these techniques so that balance we want that is what is called square root decomposition and so after applying square root decomposition what happens is that finding some becomes a o root n operation and changing the element also becomes o root n operation wow that is a good balance because in the end if like in those cases the worst case was nq nq here we can reduce that to q root n that definitely sounds like an improvement in the worst case that's nice how does scale decomposition do it we will see that actually it does it just by using a combination of these two techniques so what we do in scale decomposition is that we divide the whole array in blocks of size of square root n so one array size is square root n size is square root n and every sub array right every you can call it block or sub array every block is of size square root n so we can have at max root n blocks because root n multiplied by root n is equal to n and every block in itself is a prefix sum array so what we you can think is that so what we did in like technique 2 right prefix sum technique what we explained so this every block is like that in every block we are using technique 2 we are doing prefix sum and this if we consider this every block as one element then in the whole array we are using technique one it will become more clear when we explain it actually okay so every block is having prefix sum and the whole thing is kind of what we did in technique one let's see how we do the query all right so whenever we ask we are asked some query so basically some query would be let's say from here to here right let's say some queries from here to here so what we need to do is we take some of this whole block this whole block this whole block and for this only this part which we can get in constant time by using the prefix sum of this block similarly only this part which we can again get by the prefix sum of this block so we get whole block sums 
and two incomplete blocks. Number of blocks are limited by root n. So this will take root n time and this is just two, so constant time. So the eventual query became O of root n. All right, what, we, what do we do for the change query? Basically, we want to change one element, right? So whenever we are changing one element, let's say we are changing this element. Key thing to notice is that this block, this block, this block, this block. There are no changes in those blocks. So all of those blocks are remaining constant. Only this block is changing. So it, it would be exactly like what we did in technique two, right? We need to change all the elements from this to this point in this particular block and the blocks length is limited by root n again. So this will again be of the complexity of root n. So in a way, if you see, we are using combination of technique one and technique two. When we are changing query, we are using how we updated the prefix sum in technique two, but the length is limited by root n here. So that's why our complexity become this. And for the sum query also, we, we have to get the, like basically in technique one, right? We iterated the array from L to R. Here we are doing the same thing. We are iterating the blocks, but again, blocks are limited by root n. So every block is of length root n, and there are maximum root n number of blocks present. So again, the sum query also becomes of root n that's it so like this square decomposition which may sound very scary this is nothing but a sort of a combination of these two techniques yeah and obviously i do want to add basically square decomposition is not just a single uh, basically it doesn't just solve like single kind of problem the one we showed here it is a sort of a general concept which is used in very sort of many different kind of problems and uh, yeah if you guys find this useful probably i can make one more video where we can take like a lot of problems and sort of explain like how to apply square decomposition for those problems yeah and there are like some data structures also like uh, and some algorithms like Mo's algorithm which uses square root decomposition con concept but in a different way basically we like reorder the queries by using square root decomposition in a clever way i can talk about those also if this is useful and clear i will try to attach some problems in the description which you guys can try by using this concept all right if you like the video like and comment and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye guys. See you.